Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a very special edition of Open Loops. Uh, I'm so honored to have two gentlemen who've been on the show before come in here live. Uh, of course, in the in the left corner, uh, we have David Daniel Gonzalez, the host of Mystic Skeptic Radio Podcast. And then in the right corner, we have Rob Yox of Full Spectrum Universe. Yes, these two gentlemen, they come from different sides of the coin. We have David on the left side, who's much more of the skeptical, rationist, rational point of view, skeptical, rational. And then Rob, who's a little more, uh, a little more fringe, a little more conspiratorial. Uh, and, well, look, they both have fundamental views of the way the world works. And tonight... We're going to get to the bottom of it. Gentlemen, David, Rob, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, bro. I'm excited. Ready to get some messages out to people and show people what actual civil discourse looks like and how <laughs> we can have a conversation. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Hey, absolutely. Absolutely. And And that's the thing. I mean, I've always said that... If we are going to be having a discussion about this kind of stuff, I think both sides need to be heard just as much. You can't just say Pizzagate is something you debunk. You actually have to go inside the intricacies of it from both angles. You can't just point blank dismiss anything. Um, and hey, I also think on the other side, QAnon is popular. Let's really dive into what they're saying as opposed to, yeah, just dismissing it. And if it's garbage, hey, let's throw it all out. So that said, um, here's the way it's going to work tonight. I'm going to ask a question. Each of these gentlemen will have two minutes to have to present their initial arguments. And then uh, we will have rebuttals. There was no to coin flip here. There's nothing like that. Um, I'm just going to sort of feel it out uh, <laughs> because I, I have a good, yeah, I, I promise to remain as balanced as possible. Um, and I, I feel like this could be an interesting way to go into this. I'm going to start with first question is going to go to David Daniel Gonzalez. David. Um, and Rob, you can respond to this as well after. Could you please tell me who in your view wrote the Bible? Two minutes beginning now. <laughs> That's an easy one, uh, Greg. Uh, way to go. Um, you know, you, this is where where my perspective is split and you can say that I'm schizophrenic, but um, that's why it's called mystic and skeptic because you have the rationalist view and then you have the experiential view. And I try to fuse them together when it comes down to theology. So in my experience, I have lived a life that, um, that I've seen glimpses of the divine. And when someone came to me and gave me a Bible and said, this is the word of God, I had to read it first before I could make that assumption. Uh, so when I read it, I saw things that I that they were out of the ordinary. They weren't per se supernatural. And I'm talking about the words themselves or the wisdom. They were out of the ordinary. They weren't, um, you know, I wasn't struck by heaven with a lightning and, and saw visions the moment that I that I touched the Bible. I I saw uh, a kind of understanding and wisdom and love that asked but it's all from a human experience so it's not that you pick up the book and 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 you know i hate to uh disparage uh, the book of mormon of, or other uh revelations that somehow it has all the answers or it has or the person who has experienced the the revelation can see things clearly it's more like each individual that reads the bible gets a, a specific message from it and if you go back to the people who created it, they had um, a particular connection with uh, a, a source that, um, that was out of the ordinary for them. So if you look at religious anthropology, you would say, well, every culture, every um, tribe in the world had some type of, of way of describing their experience with the universe. And, and it's like, yeah, but 
the Bible has a very unique message. And well, that is study, two minutes. Okay. Sorry, do you want to finish that thought? You want to finish that thought before well, we go to Rob? So even if you look at other cultures, I think that, that God, through uh, the prophets, uh, convey a message, but it was the humans who wrote it. It was the prophets who wrote it. Uh, David, I was going to go into this a little bit. I'm curious what your thoughts are on the Sumerian mythology and this, because that is something that's frequently brought up in the community of uh, the fringe, the new age, this this conspiratorial idea that the Jesus myth is something that's repeated over and over again. Um, do you have a response to that or anything else Rob said? Well, um, this idea that there are um, many other faiths or uh, cultures that have similar stories um, than Jesus, it's, um, it's very um, subjective because if you watch the side guy's, guy's film, he makes all these wild claims that none of them can be uh, proven. And if you study Egyptian or, or any other religions, there are very small connections or similarities, but there's nothing specific or close. And when you look at the Sumerians, uh, I tell people that Judaism or Israelite religion comes from the Babylonians because Abraham was uh, a, a Sumerian or Chaldean that left and, and had those visions with God. So it's a derivative religion, but it's also um, a religion that it is antagonistic and, and does a, almost like a diatribe against the Babylonian religions. If you study they purposely want to deny the the pantheon and the creation story of the Babylonians and set themselves as unique. So you see that a lot in even Jesus um, is very particularistic on the way that he views the world compared to other groups. So it's um, it's intellectually dishonest to claim that there are more similarities and differences when you actually look at the text. Rob, do you have a response to that? Well, you when you say that, but you actually agreed with what I said in the sense that they take certain aspects of those stories and what do they do? They, they move them forward and progress them. They take pieces of what those stories were and hence that being the same story as Jesus. Just like when you're looking at all the different cultures that are around the world, they all talk about a great flood. So there's certain points in time that come together. They're just related and I guess in a different way or come from a different angle, but the characters still remain the same. He still, there was still somebody in the ancient Sumerian text that rose from the dead. He was still there, and he was the son of the all-knowing God, not just the God. There was a deity, uh, multiple deities at the time. So it's very similar. It's very similar. You can find the correlation. You just got to look for it. Hmm. If, if I can say one point related to that. Yeah, sure. It would be the same as saying, um, you know, the Romans and the Greeks created the democracy, and then the church took over and then the empires and then the French revolution and then the American constitution, they're all working on top of each other, but they're all uh, moving further away from the original. You can say that the founding fathers went back to the Roman and, and Greek uh, re Republic and used some of those values, but it is pushing away. It's not like, the whole idea is that you're giving people rights or you're giving leadership to certain individuals, but they're all different systems. And although they have certain connections, they're working against each other to build on something better or more, um, you know, more developed. So um, we can talk about that later. If you 